For today's talk, we're going to talk about spinal taps. These are formerly called lumbar punctures or LPs. The reason that they're called lumbar punctures is that's the region of the spine where we perform the procedure. Clearly, this does not sound like a fun procedure and it typically is not everybody's favorite. However, it's also typically not that bad. Let's talk about how we perform the procedure, why we perform the procedure, and what information we might hope to get from it. So you can see the image on the right side of the screen. It's showing the very base of the spinal segment, the, the spinal uh, canal. This is called the lumbar spine. It's showing that the spinal cord is coming down and it ends in the upper lumbar spine. At the end of the spinal cord, the nerve roots sort of come off of there and they're just floating about in the spinal fluid. This is our target. If you put a needle higher up in the spinal column, you might pierce the spinal cord with the needle and that would not be good. That's why we go down low where there's nothing but little roots floating in the water. In this case, as you can see the needle piercing in the picture, it's going between two of the vertebrae or spinal bones. And even if the needle were to contact one of the nerve roots, it just sort of pushes it to the side because it's in water. One example is when's the last time you ate spaghetti and stabbed a piece with a fork? It didn't happen. It just moved to the side, right? It's the same thing here. This could create a zing or some sort of abnormal sensation down the leg, for instance, but it is not going to cause permanent harm or damage. It's really important to understand these things if you're going to have one done because it helps you to not be as fearful and be aware of what you might be experiencing during the procedure. So once the needle's in place, it is hollow. They take out the stylet in the middle, which allows fluid to drip through the needle and can be collected into tubes and sent off to lab for processing. It does not take very long to do. They have you lay down either on your side or sort of curl forward so that you are leaning like this and arching that lower part of the back. They perform the procedure after cleaning off the back very thoroughly with antiseptic and then help letting the fluid to come out. After collection, the needle is simply pulled out from the spine, bandage is put on, and you're typically good to go. The fluid is sent for multiple different labs. Those most common are listed here. Oligoclonal bands are the classic in MS. IgG index, we're looking to see if that's elevated. And we wanna know are there increased number of white blood cells, red blood cells, protein. We look for glucose or sugar. And then there's a newer test available called kappa-free light chains. The reason that we're looking for all these different factors is there's findings that are more typical in MS and findings that are less typical. A completely normal spinal fluid assessment can occur with multiple sclerosis. So you could have normal all of these things, negative oligoclonal bands, and still have MS. But more commonly, people do have a slight elevation of the white count, elevated IgG index, positive oligoclonal bands. Lumbar punctures used to be an essential part of the diagnostic workup for MS. That typically occurred before we had MRIs and before MRIs were as readily available and high quality as they are. In most cases today, lumbar puncture is not required to make a diagnosis, and this is very important because it's something that can make people fearful about getting assessed for multiple sclerosis. For the most part, your doctor is not going to recommend that you have one of these. We usually obtain them in cases that are a little bit atypical, and you might be wondering, is this MS? Could it be something different that is mimicking multiple sclerosis? Or you're wondering, gosh, there's a couple of odd lesions and symptoms, but I'm not sure it's MS. If the spinal fluid were normal, it might help you to think, let's not pursue treatment or call it MS at this point in time. Maybe you just keep monitoring. Or if the spinal fluid were positive in that situation, you could say, I think this is MS, we should move forward with treatment. So we want to use this procedure in a very intentional way that helps us to make a decision and change what we're doing for a patient. So for a quick review, do I need an LP to diagnose MS? No, you do not. Can it help us to make the diagnosis? Yes, it can. Um, it is possible to have oligoclonal bands and not have MS, so it is not completely specific. It is also possible to have normal spinal fluid results and still have MS. And lastly, sometimes we use this lumbar puncture to help you to make the diagnostic criteria.
So sometimes people are sort of in limbo as to whether this is a clinically isolated syndrome, which is sort of like a pre-MS, but with spinal fluid results being positive, they may meet criteria for multiple sclerosis. If you do have a spinal tap, it's important to note what could happen afterwards. Again, typically the procedure itself is relatively painless and straightforward. Sometimes, of course, people might experience some pain during the procedure. The biggest consideration is that afterwards you can develop a headache, and what that is called is a post-lumbar puncture headache. And the reason for that is the spinal cord is surrounded by a sac that contains fluid, which is what we're getting. The needle punctures the hole in that sac, and usually when the needle comes out, it just seals up, no problem. Occasionally there's a small leak that persists, and that changes the pressure that is inside of that column of the brain and spinal cord so that when people sit or stand it can create an immense headache. Then you lay back down, the pressure kind of normalizes and you feel fine. We also recommend that patients rest afterwards and stay very well hydrated to help their symptoms recover quickly. Typically that will resolve on its own but sometimes you have to call the facility where you had your lumbar puncture performed and they can do what's called a blood patch to seal off that. They will take a sample of blood, just like you were giving blood at a lab. They'll go back to where they did the procedure and put the blood over the hole in the spinal, in the spinal uh, sac, and it will clot it off and prevent the leak from continuing, which should resolve the headache. That's one of the biggest things to understand because it can be terrifying to develop that headache. Typically, that's something that will go in its own or is very treatable, but it's important to know what to do if that does occur.